And we do begin with some breaking right. news tonight as we come on the air. We are looking at a massive fire in Lomita. LA County Fire is responding here to the 2100 block of Palos Verdes Drive North. So this appears to be an apartment style mm -hmm. residential type building bordering yeah, the Green know. Hills Memorial Park Cemetery. Yeah, we want to get to some live pictures right now of this fire because it looks jazz to just be growing in size. It looks like yeah. now um, since 645 when this fire first started, the flames have completely engulfed this entire complex. We're talking about dozens possibly of homes here that people live in or rent wow. in this area here in Lomita. Take a look. It just looks like it's completely engulfed this entire building, a very large structure. Again, this is, we believe, the uh, Vista Verde condominium complex there in Lomita. Um, right now, you can see firefighters are attacking this from several ladders. Many times they just choose to surround and drown because that's really all they can do at this point. It looks like we do have um, LA County Fire PIO on the phone with us. Craig Little, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, uh, this is a massive fire. We've seen uh, parts of the roof collapse there. Uh, tell us uh, what we know so far. Well, at approximately 6.42 p.m. this evening, units were dispatched to the 2100 block of Palos Verdes Drive north in the city of Lomita um, to, a, to a structure fire. Uh, once the initial units arrived, Due to the heavy smoke and fire, this fire was immediately balanced to a second alarm with about 150 fire personnel fighting on this uh, currently dynamic situation. Can you tell us about is anyone, was anyone injured? This looks to be like a very busy apartment complex here in Lomita. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, we don't have any reports of injuries as of yet that just haven't been reported to us. Rather, we don't know if there have been any injuries to personnel or, or civilians at this point. What about evacuations? Did any rescues have to be made responding to something this large? I mean, we're looking at someone's porch also going up in flames. Right. I'm on scene right now. I'm going to have to get back and find a, a better report for you on that. I'm just off scene. Um, but I will give you more information as it develops. No, that makes sense. You know, many times, even though this started at 645, this really is just the beginning stages right. of what you guys are learning. And at this point, we know it's all about trying to contain this fire. Do you know, can you explain what tactics firefighters are using at this point? We see a firefighter here on a ladder just trying to just oh. douse the area that they are in charge of, really. Yeah, at this point, we're in defensive mode. I think we have all of the occupants of the apartment uh, evacuated right now, so um, we can apply very, very large amounts of water on the complex at this point, and that's, uh, that's about the best we can do it right now. I can give you... Uh, a little bit more information later as this develops. Yeah, it's a very large complex. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you probably have a better look of just how large this complex is and how this fire just tore through here. At first, we start, we saw that um, it, it looked like the flames were in just one portion of the complex. Now, um, being there on the ground, at least fr from our eye in the sky, from SkyCal, it looks like the entire complex there has now been fully engulfed in flames. Is that what you're also seeing there on the ground? Uh, I'm not. I'm not so okay. sure about the entire complex. There are multiple units that are fully involved at this point. Um, I'm about to walk down there after I speak with you to get a better handle on the situation. Okay. Wow. So this happening in the city of Lomita. You can see a massive fire there at this apartment complex. Uh, they moved Craig Littles on the phone there with LA County Fire saying they made and moved this to a second alarm with 150 personnel responding. Yeah, and I have to ask, you know, we saw this massive storm come through LA County earlier this morning. Then uh, that rain has completely tapered off for much of the afternoon. We are expecting some of that rain to pick up again. Are you guys hoping that that happens and how much of a help will that be for crews? It, 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 to tell you the truth, it depends on the amount of rain yeah. that, that gets dumped on this. Um, when there's fire at this intensity level, um, it, 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 would be, it would need to be a pretty strong rainstorm to come mm -hmm. down over this right now. Yeah, sure. and I think many people assume that a little bit of rain could help, but we see massive fires in rain, snow. It doesn't matter the conditions, but you're right. Um, it would have to be a significant amount to really make a dent in these flames. Um, I have to ask for people who 
who live in this complex um, may have had, I know every, the situation's really just being assessed right now, but who may have had pets, you know, at home, and if they weren't home at the time, um, is there any, any information you can give them about where they can go or what they can do right now as this is really just in, you know. About an hour in. Yeah. Yeah, it's very difficult to say exactly what's going on and what, what pets might be still trapped inside of the buildings. Um, we, we just have to get a handle on this fire before we can even get to that point. I did see on the way back from the fire to my vehicle, I saw one dog running stray. Mm -hmm. It ran across the street to where some people were and hopefully they were able to harness it. But it, it, it literally followed me all the way out from Ugh. the scene of the fire onto the street. So um, that dog is going to be okay. I'm yeah. not sure how many pets are currently in the building right now. We, we can always hope that they were all evacuated. Yeah. Just devastating on a Saturday night. And yeah, Leslie, you had a good point. How many people were home or out mm -hmm. uh, or even away from their... It just looks like many... Their um, property. Uh, yeah, apartments. we're unable to determine the exact number uh, of people who are actually at home or occupying their, their, uh, their buildings right now. And I know this may be a little premature, but any idea of how this started or do we know who first made the call um, to fire saying, hey, I I'm seeing smoke? No, we don't don't have any information at this point. We probably will later on. Mm -hmm. This cause is this is definitely going to be under cause investigation uh, once we get through with this. But as of right now, the the source of the ignition is we're unable to determine. Wow, it is a massive fire and so much loss to property. I, I'm. So far, glad to hear that you had mentioned no reports of any injuries yet, that you're at least also the firefighters in this defensive mode, uh, so no firefighters have been injured, correct? And again, uh, to my knowledge, no, no, okay. fires, no firefighters have been injured or civilians. I, I really have to go right okay. now. Okay. Um, thank you. Go okay. ahead, Craig Little there, uh, the public information Thank officer so with LA County Fire, hopefully to step away, get back to the scene and gather more information. Mm -hmm. And many times when we do speak to the PIOs, it, it's very early on. They just got there. They got the call and maybe they weren't even at the station at the right. time. They could have been at home. So he's just getting on scene, really assessing what's happening, Jasmine. But right now we know 150 firefighters fighting this apartment complex blaze in the Lomita area. He couldn't tell us just if anyone had to be rescued. He couldn't tell us, if, you know, if anyone has really been injured in this jazz. And you're hoping no one has, but he did describe to us that at one point he saw what looked like a dog that had, you know, started running stray, um, hopefully getting help from some members of the community standing by, possibly their owners. We hope their owners, but at this point, that seems to be the reality of the situation because we know this apartment complex stretched across the street, yeah. and it looks like there are dozens of um, units involved right now. Yeah, so this again happened just before 7 o'clock, 6.42 p.m., when mm -hmm. The firefighter, those, uh, the department was dispatched here to the 2100 block of Palos Verdes Drive North for this fire. Uh, they, I mean, when they got to the scene, they encountered some very heavy smoke mm -hmm. and all those flames already uh, roaring through the roof of this um, apartment complex. Mm -hmm. uh, they, and they raised it to that two alarm, which just means calling in more resources to respond to this. Mm -hmm. So 150 firefighters there already. They've been battling this for about uh, an hour and 15 minutes, but you we've seen it grow in size dramatically. Yeah. It went from one part of um, the complex here to pretty much the entire thing. But at some points, you can see that people's, you can see inside these, these units, right, through their patios. Um, you know, people have lived here maybe for years. Families have lived here. They ha hold all their belongings here. And not just one unit, how no. quickly it spread to the entire, a good chunk of this complex. Yeah, and if people live in this area, not even, we know these fires yeah. you can see from yeah. miles and miles away. Um, you're probably seeing a lot of smoke in the air right now. You may even be seeing the flames. Um, and this is exactly what's happening in Lomita right now. Take a look at how many uh, ladders they have up, just trying to surround and drown dangerous these flames. Dangerous job, too, for these firefighters. Very dangerous. But this is the best approach at this point, yep. right? Um, in defensive mode, trying to just... Well, the roof is gone. Yeah, completely gone. It completely collapsed. At one point, we could see half of this building. Yeah.
still standing and it looks like this entire thing, um, the entire roof has just But the caved parking in. on the bottom, so I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out exactly how many stories tall and uh, we're hearing that this may be the Vista Verde okay. apartment building because it is right there on mm -hmm. Palos Verdes Drive North if you're familiar with the area. Uh, it butts up right next to the uh, cemetery, one okay, of the main cemeteries area. there. So it doesn't look like there's other surrounding uh, complexes then. The Green Hills Memorial Park Cemetery. Okay, and it looks like, um, Jazz, we, we have confirmed it is the Vista Verde okay. apartment complex there. We don't know how many units um, are in this area, but we know at least a, a large portion of it has now completely caught fire. But you are mentioning the way this apartment complex is built, right? Yeah. It looks like the parking garage sits on the bottom and then maybe one or two, two units floors. on top. Um, the other thing that does worry me though, if these cars are at the bottom, if cars are still there, right. a lot of times we see if the cars do engulf explosions. Um, Explosive material. You, it, that has, just, it doesn't look like it's reached that far down. Yet. Oh, and it just devastated. You can see the inside of that apartment mm -hmm. right there. The chairs and the lamps mm -hmm. that are burning from that porch. Yeah, and you have to feel for these families who, you know, some may have been home, say, some may have not been at home. And when you think about that, you wonder who was in those complexes. Did they have to make rescues? The PIO could not no, tell us. Right we just did not have the information right. at this at this time. And how about quickly, rescues. if they got the reports at 6:42, and we're looking at 8:11 right now, how quickly this fire spread and, and that they had to evacuate. And you can imagine if the fire starts on one side of the building, you live on the other side of the building. You, you may have not seen the smoke. You may have not seen any of that. Uh, your hope is that you would have heard someone saying, get right. out. I can imagine those residents were probably telling each other, hey, get out, get out, because this, this thing you spread can't grab much, quickly. Right? Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. You, you can unless you're fully prepared for something like this. And the reality is, is most people are not. Yeah. But and how frightening, and mm -hmm. the smoke, I, they say, you know, that's the most dangerous, the smoke inhalation. Mm -hmm. So, yes, time is of the essence for you to uh, grab what you can, but most importantly, get out with your family, with your pets as mm -hmm. quickly as possible. And I hope everyone was able to do that. Yeah. I know Craig Little with LA County Fire was going to go check on that. He had to get back there to the scene. Yeah, um, and this is, of course, a very uh, fluid and very dramatic scene right now, and they need all hands on deck at this point. Fire crews, of course, we know have been busy all day, not only fighting fires, but we know that water with rescues. the amount of water we've had, right. we've, water rescues, um, car accidents, anything like that. Those, these fire crews have been extremely busy of course, they are always prepared to fight fires of this magnitude. Um, but the hope now is that people were able to get out on time. We haven't seen any ambulances in this area. At least I haven't. I don't know if you've been able to see that, Jasmine. Um, it looks like a lot. Of the, no, we are seeing some ambulances. I guess we haven't seen any stretchers pull out, but you know right. they might be there just as a precaution at this point. Um, but you can see this entire apartment complex surrounded yeah. by these very yeah. large trees as well. Oh yeah. You worry. And how much be, smoke? I mean, yeah, it could is. Yeah, that be a concern thick. for firefighters? Right, they're on standby to protect the firefighters, and I'm, I'm trying to. And no doubt, Red Cross is there, mm -hmm. if not responding, to set up a an emergency shelter. So I will reach out, and I'm sure our desk is working on it right now, reaching out to the Red Cross to uh, figure out where people can uh, go and mm -hmm. reunite, like Leslie, you said, with their pets, with loved ones, if they are just watching this, wondering how do they get a hold of. Uh, those who live here um, yeah. at that shelter. So the Red Cross is always quick to respond there in, in the city of Lomita, yeah. uh, happening there on Palos Verdes Drive uh, North. Palos Verdes Drive North, 2100 block. Yeah, again, this is the Vista Verde Apartments in Lomita. Um, just writing down some of the information we've been getting um, from fire crews. Um, Right now, I think we're getting a little bit away from the fire, but we're trying to get back. It just gives you an idea of just how large this building is, um, you know. And how close it is to some of those other homes right yeah. across the street. At, when it was a light out, you could actually make out a pool in the middle, I believe, um, on, on one side of it. So it looked like maybe that was a courtyard of um, the apartment complex there. Um, but I did make out what looked, I believe, was a pool earlier. Um, but it does look like another building sitting just off to the right. Right, but look at that um, roof. 
and that is you can imagine if those people live over there uh just as scary for them thinking hey will the fire jump no to doubt. our area yeah. being told to evacuate if not already mm -hmm. you can see the massive response there on the streets behind the building in front all surrounding there it's going to impact several blocks as they will be investigating this through the night as soon as they can get these flames out that are just roaring and ripping through the roof there yeah. of this apartment building and then again, you know, on defensive mode right now, 150 firefighters on the ground. Um, everything starting just around 6.45 p.m. Now going into about an hour, what, and a half. Um, and of course, we're trying to get an update from LA Fire to get the very latest on this, but um, we're hoping to get another phoner with someone, Jazz, and then hopefully get more information or get an update um, because you just have to wonder how many people were affected by this and if everyone was able to get out safely. Uh, firefighters doing, of course, all they can. It's incredible to watch these firefighters on this ladder here um, because, you know, it takes so much energy to just control that hose and really um, stand up there. So. We have to give kudos to these firefighters who several ladders are up now just trying to um, do what they can to put these this flame out. But you can see the job is uh, much larger than than they can. I, I wouldn't say they can handle because they can handle this. But at this point, it looks like, you know, they kind of have to let this die out and do what they can at right. the same time. At least uh, some listings for this apartment building mm -hmm. uh, on there on Palos Verdes Drive South, they listed as condos okay. uh, built back in the 1980s, uh, and it didn't look like a, a brand new building, mm -hmm. um, but they're on the Palos Verdes Drive North, so uh, it has about, they were saying about 25 of these condo units, but it looks wow. much larger than that, so yeah. whether it's uh, pretty large condos, um, mm -hmm. some listed you know for sale on some of these real estate websites and I'm just searching through trying to pinpoint mm -hmm. exactly if this is the uh, complex that we're looking at here uh, but it is on the same stretch there of Palos Verdes Drive North. Yeah um, I'm seeing that as well Vista and it's Verde. saying that it as we had mentioned it is uh, two stories. Yeah. 25 units two stories with the parking garage just sitting yep. under those units here. Just devastating for for so, so many people. I mean, you look at how many families and individuals impacted by this, by this blaze, this, this, these flames that are just roaring through. I mean, it's gonna, I don't, I, looking at it now, it's gonna be hard to salvage anything from this, from the mm -hmm. apartments that are, that are burning right now because firefighters can't even go, they're in defensive mode, so yeah. they can't go in mm -mm. And, and put it out and, and try to save any of these condos no. because at this point, the, the roof's collapsed and, it's just the, the job is try to just drown out these flames um, and be there as long as it as it takes because there's not much they can do to save anything. Yeah. But it is devastating because sometimes we do get a look at um, inside one of these condos and you can make out someone's living situation, um, their, their living room or whatever it may be. Um, and it's hard to see this entire roof has just collapsed. So if the fire hasn't yet touched the bottom units, those are completely destroyed at this point. Um, you have a, a total loss of this entire building um, and all of these homes, if it is, in fact, 25 units. Yeah. Well, and, and these are described as, you know, you could get up a, a two bedroom, two bath condo. They call this a quiet community. I mean, people's dream home, mm -hmm. you know, tucked away in this in this uh, uh, little community adjacent to Rolling Hills in the Palos Verdes Peninsula, uh, these condos again, some some listed still up for sale, but um, that I'm sure many families have been living there, like you said, for years. Mm -hmm. uh, they have fireplaces and uh, you know dining nooks, and they're described as just being a perfect family home for folks there on uh, so close to the peninsula in Rolling Hills. Yeah, and you can see that. Um there, some firefighters are on the ground and they are uh, dousing yep. just the through inside. The yeah, through the porch there. I There's not many cars I can make out in these parking garages. I, I did make out at yeah. least one. And I don't see many people. You know, you see a lot of the neighbors standing mm -hmm. around, but they're keeping them well back, I'm sure, because I'm, I'm seeing all firefighters and they've, hopefully that means everyone's been able to Okay. safely uh, get out of the way here. They're not, as far as uh, the public information officer told us, yeah. they're, they're not in rescue mode right now. 
Yeah, that that's definitely what he said. He said they're they're not in rescue mode at this point, just in defensive mode, trying to uh, douse these flames as best as they can. And sometimes it means uh, I know we use the term quite often, but just surround it yep. and drown it with as much water as possible, um, so eventually they can get the upper hand. But you're right, Jasmine. I'm not seeing. We're trying to kind of scour Pull this back. area here, and I'm seeing a lot of firefighters. I'm seeing some sheriff's personnel as well, and it looks like at least two people standing here that look like to be community members, maybe yeah. residents, um, but you can't really make it out, obviously, from our vantage point. You do have someone on okay, the phone so few, yeah. trying to speak to someone. I can imagine Clusters just if you, if you know someone who lives here or if you live here, it is a scary situation. It looks like there's some restaurants across the street, a Jack a in the Box station. and a gas station. Um, so the hope now, I think, when you're watching this is that everyone did make it out. We didn't get yeah. that answer, but we have heard um, there were no, we, we don't believe, he, at least he didn't know at the time, if there were any rescues or if anyone had been injured. Um, when we say anyone, we also include firefighters and in that. He says yeah. he didn't know. We spoke to the PIO earlier. He did not know if anyone yet he had, had been to get injured. back there, right? Mm -hmm. And, he and I think what we're looking at here, correct me if I'm wrong, is that firefighters on, on the, the roof, roof of, of a, the adjacent? Other? Yeah, yeah. They have climbed up there, so no doubt being very careful and watching for any kind of structural issues. But oh, they are surrounded by smoke and using those flashlights. That is really hard gear. to see. Yeah, um, trying to dig into the roof and, and keep this fire from yeah jumping over. Well, you Kelly County Fire did yeah. tweet out about 30 minutes ago, okay. uh, just confirming that it is a second alarm fire here on the 2100 block of uh, Palos Verdes Drive North in Lobina, and they responded mm -hmm. around 6.50 p.m., and they arrived to this uh, apartment fire that was already fully engulfed, uh, meaning just flames are ripping through it already, and so they said their crews uh, actively started engaging in this firefight. And so we're trying to get updates as quickly as 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 we can. Our assignment mm -hmm. desk is working very hard on that, making phone calls just like we had Craig Little on the phone, yeah. trying to answer what he could, but he had to rush back to the scene. And we know that one of our reporters, Lauren Posen, is now headed to uh, the scene there in Lomita to get what she can there on the ground. Um, at this point, you can see the firefighters on the adjacent building. It looks like maybe they're trying to just see if this uh, roof is secure enough for them. Um, it looks like the building they're standing on is not connected with uh, the the building that is currently on fire. But take a look. What a heroic job by these firefighters who are just trying to douse the flames um, from this building. Actually, you guys, I think it is connected to that uh, building that had the initial fire. If you are just joining us here, this is a massive condo building fire in Lomita, LA County Fire, um, now trying to do what they can to, uh, you know, save this other building here. It looks like possibly cutting holes in the roof of that building. They do that many times to try to get some of that smoke out of there. Um, but this here we know is the Vista Verde condominiums. We believe anywhere from 25 units. Um, you can see majority of the building, when we do get wide here, you'll see it is fully engulfed. The roof has collapsed of this building. We know it is a two-story condominium building, so many families um, called this place home, and at this point, this is absolutely devastating for them to watch. But we know many times the Red Cross is there to assist. We are getting an up-close look at um, one of the apartments, and you can make out what possibly looks like, you know, patio furniture there, the inside of that uh, living room. How much water is falling into. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, you see how much water they've been dumping on mm -hmm. this fire, trying to get it out. And these yeah. flames are seem to be just being relentless, all that stuff burning. The stoves, the kitchen, the fireplaces that were inside of these condos on a on a and wet and rainy night. And but. we talked to the fire PIO, asked him, you know, will the rain that comes tonight, and it may be raining in Lomita right now, but could that help in any way? He says no, it would have to be just an enormous storm to dump tons of water on here um, to really help out with this firefight. But right now it is these, I will, I will say it looked like earlier, maybe six ladders 
it was either four, four, six, four to six ladders that were up just trying to surround and drown the flames right now. Um, and, and we are seeing a crew of firefighters on the building, on the roof of the adjacent building, or it looks like it may be connected, Jazz. I did see them possibly, um, you know, sometimes they try to uh, make a hole through the roof right. so that some of that smoke is able to get out. It helps in the firefight. Um, but it does look like they're still on that roof. It looks like it's sturdy enough for them to be standing there. And they're just trying to attack these flames from any and every way possible at this point and try to see if they can get this uh, fire contained more than anything. Yeah. I think they just don't want it to spread anymore. We saw around 645 when this fire started, it was on one side of this apartment building. Now by almost 830, it has completely taken over this entire building. The roof has now collapsed and firefighters were told about 150 firefighters are on scene and they are in defensive mode right now. I, I, you know, and this is always the follow up questions, but about the fire alarm and the fire sprinkler systems, if they were working properly, mm -hmm. if they were able to uh, get be come activated at all, which obviously, even if they were, they did not do much to keep this fire from spreading, which it mm -hmm. obviously did and very quickly since it started just before 7 p.m. and we're looking at maybe an hour and a half now that it's been burning this complex. And while some of the flames have gone down a little bit, it just continues to just burn through this building, this condominium complex there mm -hmm. on uh, Palos Verdes Drive North, the 2100 block. Uh, LA County Fire is responding. They've uh, called in for mm -hmm. uh, additional crews to arrive, which is they might even be more than 150 personnel at this point. Um, yeah. A few ambulances there. We saw some people clustered. Um, near the uh, the fast food restaurant, Jack in the Box, mm -hmm. at the gas station, making phone calls, or whether they were residents or neighbors, um, you know, just trying to figure out and call loved ones, saying we're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens next? And Red Cross, uh, I have not seen them yet through our SkyCal vantage point, but no doubt happen. they are there. Yeah, and you know, we did speak to. LA County Fire, and uh, they could not give us an idea if anyone had to be rescued, but they goes to your point, Jazz, if the fire alarms were working, if everything was working as it should, hopefully everyone was able to get out. You do wonder, though, what if people weren't home? What if they had pets in their apartments? Were they able to get out? The uh, firefighter we spoke to earlier described a scene that he saw. It looked like uh, a stray dog was running across the street and uh, running towards some people hopefully getting shelter, possibly believed to be from these apartments. Um, the thing here is if they did have to make any rescues, there's a lot of patios here that would make it easier for someone right. to be rescued um, as opposed to being trapped. But again, we're well into this firefight and you're hoping they are not making rescues right now because that would be a very dangerous situation. As you mentioned, it's not always the flames that are danger. Right. It smoke. is the smoke and the smoke inhalation. And they can't even go inside because of mm -hmm. the, the fire has torn through uh, the, at least that top floor. Yeah. And no <clears throat> doubt the water and the smoke has now just engulfed that entire condo. Yeah, building. Man. I did just uh, send yeah. a text message to um, Marilyn Jimenez Davila with the Red Cross LA Regional Center to see uh, if they can give me a number on how many people they might mm -hmm. be uh, helping, assisting. Uh, assisting, right, with these uh, after they were evacuated from this condo complex there. And this is the uh, Vista Verde condominiums in Lomita. Jasmine, we were just looking up online to try to get information about uh, what this condo looks like. We know um, it does sit on the 2100 block of Palos Verdes Drive North. Uh, we saw a cross from, uh, it looked like a jack in the box. I'm looking up some of these units and many of them look to be two bedroom, two bath condos um, that people purchase as opposed to rent, but I'm sure you have renters as well. Um, they look to be rather large, 1,500 square feet, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,700 square feet, two bedroom, two bath. Uh, so you can imagine these are areas where families would live. Um, you know, whether they just be grown adults or, you know, people with kids. Um, this is a very large complex. We believe at least 25 units, two stories. Um, and for majority of these people, just looking at this, um, they have lost their home tonight.
again, firefighters could not tell us. It's very early on in this firefight. They could not tell us what may have ignited this. We tried to ask who made that initial call. Um, many times they can get information from that. They did not have that information just yet. Yeah. Of course, again, they're still fighting this fire. It's hard to get all that information right now. Their priority is just to get these flames under control. So they're going on about an hour and a half now fighting mm -hmm. this condominium fire there on uh, Rancho uh, Palos Verdes Drive North, the 2100 block in the city of Lomita, a second alarm fire that has engulfed this condo complex. We are not sure how many people had to be evacuated, if there were any rescues or really any serious injuries. As far as the public information officer with LA County Fire could tell us, he had no reports that there were any kind of uh, rescues or injuries, but he had to get back to the scene. So he did not have a good grasp on, you know, if, if he was gonna encounter that when he got there, but at, at least as far as he could tell, he had not heard about uh, any any of those um, injuries yeah. or um, and you, uh, rescues and you would taking hope, place. Of course, that that is that is a good news. Many times, if something like that did have to happen, they would have immediate and knowledge so of fast. that, right? Because that would be um, a d information that is and mass casualty and using those ambulances important. to get them yeah. to the hospital. So yeah, it is still roaring. This is live from Sky Cal, mm -hmm. and you are still looking at these flames. I mean, they are not. Given up easy here as these firefighters uh, continue to battle the flames and uh, try to put it out from the uh, roof right next to it. You could see how close they are just uh, face to face with the smoke, uh, surrounded by smoke and the job that these firefighters have uh, and what the, as, as we know, what they go through. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're putting their lives on the line here. Every time, every time, especially, you know, and when you above. see the, the firefighters on the ladders or when you see the ones standing on that roof that you know, um, you know, you don't, they, you, they don't know just how stable it is. They do do checks and they hope, you know, it will be stable enough, but we saw that smoke going through the roof that the firefighters were standing on um, just to fight these flames from every single vantage point that they can. Um, of course, the best being the latter because they just can douse it with water. But at this point, it's pretty much about trying to get these flames at any point because that's what they can do. They yeah. can't go in right now. This Protect situation themselves. is just, yeah, too dangerous. A lot of those uh, like vents and those air conditioning mm -hmm. units just uh, causing it almost just looks like an inferno as they, you know, you can see right into the, the, the condos there. Mm -hmm from the uh, top of the roof here, but a lot of those vents and I'm, I'm guessing chimneys from some of these condos had fireplaces uh, is what it said, uh, 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 some of these two bedroom condos. So maybe those were the chimneys that have now, you know, the fire just kind of got up inside of those and just burning very, very hot and quick. Yeah. Trying to check with our assignment desk right now if they're hearing anything possibly from the LA County Fire Department or even on the scanners. A lot of time that's where uh, they're getting a lot of their information minute by minute. Um, trying to see if we can get a current update right now. The last update we got was about 30 minutes ago from LA County who told us Obviously, they're still in defensive mode right now. Um, they had very little information about any rescues or how many people had to be evacuated. Uh, but we do know about 150 firefighters were there on the ground. This again, all happening on the 2100 block of Palos Verdes North at the Vista Verde Apartments here in Lomita. Yeah, this 25 unit condominium two stories uh, built back in the 1980s with parking underneath. And you think about just how many people have been impacted. This is just devastating to see. I mean, just roaring through and burning up. Uh, it's gonna be uh, obviously a, a loss to, to so many of these families. As long as they got out safely though, and you know, they're able to protect their loved ones, their pets. Okay. Oh, this is good. I, I just heard from our uh, director. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, we're trying to get Craig Little, the public information officer, back on the phone with us because he had stepped away to try to get more information. Yeah. So hang with us. We are calling him right now and we're going to uh, put and him back the on the air. the latest information. Um, it would be great to speak with him and just try to get any information, especially for, I'm sure, the people that live in this area, the people that live at this apartment complex, know someone that lives there. Um, they're probably wondering 
is everyone okay? Yeah. I know that's something, Jazz, you and I are wondering. Was everyone able to get out okay? It's a lot of people. To it's a lot of people, and you wonder it's a Saturday. Was everyone home at the time? Do they have pets, children? There's a lot that goes through your head when you see something like this, um, just because of how fast and I know, this fire yeah. moved. And I know we report on these uh, house fires, these apartment fires, when they happen overnight. Mm -hmm. This was around 7 p.m., but when you when you get one of these fires, all I can think of is, uh, if anything, if this happened at 7, people were awake, yeah. they were out at dinner, mm -hmm. just getting ready for bed, or yeah. you know, kind of settling down, not 2 in the morning, as we've yeah. shown up on some of these scenes, and it's caught so many people by surprise that they just sadly and tragically haven't been able to get out in time when it's two or three in the morning. But yeah. okay, we have Craig Little back on the phone. Craig, thank you so much for jumping back on. What do we know about evacuations, injuries? Uh, tell us. Um, I'm sorry for the noise. Um, currently, we don't have any reports of the injuries to either fire personnel or civilians. Um, and we are still actively engaged with some active fire right now. This has been uh, balanced to a second alarm. And we have approximately 150 uh, fire personnel on this fire. Craig, I'm looking at this, and it's hard to. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that there are no injuries because you see the flames and the smoke, and I just think, wow, that everyone got out uh, relatively okay. Yeah, um, like I said before, there's been no reports of injury as of yet, mm -hmm. um, and we hope it stays that way. You know, we, we won't get a full handle on this until the fire is extinguished. Right. So, but. Yeah, we're still actively involved with this fire. Now we yeah. we saw that year the fire. Of course, you've told us that um, fire crews are in defensive mode, but we saw several crews on a roof. It looked like an adjacent building. Um, could you tell us anything about the tactics being used now by fire crews there on the ground, and if that other well, building may be um, threatened by these flames? Well, currently, we're right now what we can, what we are considered defensive mode. Um, the, the crews that you see actually on the roof right now, they are acting. Um, I can't really see exactly where they are. Mm -hmm. I'm right where uh, the command post is, but they would probably be on the other building, mm -hmm. uh, making sure the fire doesn't spread to the uninvolved building. Sure. What's so difficult about this type of fire? I mean, talk about the challenges that these firefighters are up against. Well, anytime you have a large apartment complex, you're going to have uh, units that are connected to each other and then a short burn time in between those walls that spread from one unit to another in a rapid fashion, depending on how hot that fire is. Do we know how many units may be involved right now? As of right now, I, I can't give you an estimate, mm -hmm. um, uh, an accurate estimate right now. We have. Um, we have a few battalion chiefs. We have a few truck companies. We have uh, many engine companies, as well as hazmat units on scene right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and, hazmat and, and urban search and rescue units. Okay, so because uh, obviously they're there just so they can go in, because you, you really can't confirm if there are, I guess, potentially people or animals inside, or I mean. Yeah. When, when we're in this, I'm sorry, one moment. Yeah, generally, when we're at this stage of development of the fire and we're, we're still in the process of extinguishing the most active fire, uh, we really can't make entry into anywhere until that's handled first. Ugh. So um, mm -hmm. as of right now, we can say that there are no reports of injuries to firefighters or civilians. Yeah. Okay. Do you know, Craig, when uh, firefighters got to the scene, what was that like? Were people, did you get any kind of a sense or details about what was that when they arrived? What was it like? Well, all I can tell you is that when, when units were responding, they were dispatched at 642 in the evening to a structure fire. Once they got there, um, they witnessed heavy smoke and fire coming from one of the units. And that's when we decided to balance it to a second alarm fire with additional units to fight this fire. Um, that's the best I can tell you right now. The first in engine company is really hard at work right now. Yeah. So I can't really I can't really give you a full report on this. Everybody is really working hard right now. So 
they really don't have enough time to talk to me right now. No, that completely makes sense. And we thank you, of course, for uh, your time. I'm not going to let you go just yet, but um, we can see them hard at work here, both on the roof, on the ladders. You know, Craig, you told us when you arrived, you were seeing maybe what looked like a pet running across the street. What was the scene like when you arrived there? Are you seeing many residents uh, nearby? I didn't see any residents nearby. Once I arrived on Palos Verde Drive North, there were a few uh, residents outside of the building, pretty far away from the building itself. Um, and then I went down the hill where the active fire was. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see many residents. I saw maybe three or four, and they may be, they may be staged somewhere else right now. Sure. Do you know if Craig Red Cross is there or where that shelter might be getting set up at? I'm sorry. Oh, Red I, Cross. I you. Have you heard about a Red Cross shelter or anything like that that we can give uh, people watching? I will find that for you in a moment. Um, things are pretty dynamic right now. Sure. Once we get a little settled here, I'll be able to get you that information. You know, we're getting a, obviously a bird's eye view from Sky Kellen. It looks like the roof has completely collapsed of this building, but we do know that it is two stories. I have seen some of the uh, lower level units and some of them do look possibly to be untouched. Is that the case? Does it look like the flames are more towards the top? You know, I can imagine the bottom, of course, are completely gone, but it doesn't look like it has completely, uh, this building hasn't completely fallen through right. at least. Yeah, it's difficult to, for me to say exactly because I'm not actually mm. there. I'm, I'm down where the fire, close to where the fire started. Mm -hmm. I can see them applying heavy amounts of water. Um, hold on one moment. Just making a little walk down here. Um, so, yes, it's a two story apartment complex, mm -hmm. but let me make it clear that the very first floor is uh, parking. So, it's mm -hmm. parking, then uh, the first floor, and then the second floor. So, essentially, we're looking at three stories if you're including the uh, parking structure. And Craig, you must, uh, I mean, there's so much to burn, and that's why this is so stubborn also to get out. I mean, these flames, it's just, and from what you're seeing, I'm sure you're just seeing, yeah, you said a large amount of water, and it just seems, yeah. uh, how long is this going to take with your, your experience? Uh, it, it's really difficult to say in this situation right now. I'm still looking at active flames. They're not as hot and heavy as when I first arrived. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I do, um, I went to my vehicle, came back, and just the amount of water that's being put out. I, I, I actually walked through deep, deep water wow. um, down where the parking was. So that gives you an idea of exactly how much water is being poured on this fire. Wow. Let's just talk about the, the day these firefighters have had. Many of your crews, of course, we know prior to this, although you guys are equipped to handle a fire of this magnitude. Um, Earlier today, you guys were dealing with this massive storm, right? We're talking about water rescues, potential um, rescues with people possibly in accidents and stuff like that. This has been, has this been a busy day for fire crews? I'm not sure to tell you the truth exactly what was mm -hmm. going on earlier. Um, you know, we were expecting a heavy, heavy rainfall mm -hmm. today, and especially this this area in Lomita is so close to the Palos Verdes area where you've seen a lot of devastation with with homes um, after rains, even before the rain, mm -hmm. and just the unstable conditions that they have on the land over there. So um, I would imagine they were probably dealing with some, some calls here, but I couldn't tell you exactly what was going on earlier. No, definitely. We know it's been a busy uh, day just for fire crews, probably all across the Southland. And, you know, Craig, we... we Definitely report on fires of this magnitude, but I can't tell you the last time I've seen this big of a fire at an apart just rip through an apartment complex like this. It just these these images that we're showing just look absolutely devastating on the ground yeah. for you. What's that we, like? We can only hope yeah. for the best that there was no one inside. Everyone was evacuated, including that. And again, we won't have any. Uh, more detail on that, but this is always going to be a devastating situation for anybody who, had, who dwells in a large apartment complex like this, because everything they own is probably in there, and they, they are essentially homeless. They, they are displaced right now.
Yeah, it's That's, really hard yeah. to see, especially because we're looking at um, some of these condos that were listed for sale. Many of them, two bedroom, two bath, you know, 1,500 square feet. You can imagine um, families possibly live there. So this this is just absolutely devastating. SkyCal is going to have to go refuel for some time. Uh, we do have some video to show you from earlier uh, this evening when this fire started right around 645. Um, but, but SkyCal, you know, yeah. they've been up there for quite some time and now have to go refuel so not to uh, think that the flames that you're going to see some larger flames here in the next few seconds here from earlier in the night when this fire was just really ripping through this apartment complex so uh, again sky cal is going to leave and you can see some of the flames like uh, craig little there said has have died down mm -hmm. and they continue to dump a massive amount of water on this fire craig uh, I, again i appreciate the time is there any other updates you can give us uh, not as of uh, right now. Okay. Give us a call back a little later. Okay. Thank you so much. I know you have to step away and do your thing, so I appreciate mm -hmm. it. As he's Thank you. said, he's uh, you know been wading through knee deep water, oh. uh, walking through, trying to get a sense of uh, where this fire is burning. He said it started on one end of this condo complex, and then just so quickly spread right before seven o'clock tonight. Yeah, and I will tell you, as I'm watching Sky Cal leave, I know the viewers can't see this, but um, there is a massive fire presence there right now. We know this is a second alarm fire, but we are talking about battalion chiefs there, multiple ladders there as well. Uh, you can see this fire from miles away. SkyCal is miles from this fire, and I can still see the amount of presence there. And of course, what you're looking at right now is the roof that has completely collapsed of this condominium complex in Lomita. This is the Vista Verde condos. We know at the 2100 block of Palos Verdes North, we spoke to Craig Little. He's the public information officer with the L.A. County Fire Department who is fighting this, uh, both, you know, in the air and on the ground, telling us, you're right, Jazz, um, he says this, there's so much water being dumped on this that it was knee-deep as he walked through. Right now, they do have um, urban search and rescue there and hazmat units, but they cannot go in. Right. because they're on defensive mode right now. It's about trying uh, to get these flames secure enough for them to go in so they couldn't. As of right now, we know there are no injuries that right. unfortunately may change as we learn more about this and they're able to get in, these, in this building. But for right now, we don't believe there has been anyone injured, both people who live at this condo complex and firefighters. Right, and he just says he hopes it stays that way, as we all do, of course. And, and again, as the crews continue to fight this from the ladders, from nearby roofs, from the ground, mm -hmm. uh, keeping everyone a safe distance back, uh, Craig Little there with the LA County Fire said, he was only able to really walk past a, a handful of residents, what he thought were residents, uh, kind of standing further back. Yeah. Um, he, he saw a stray dog running away from the, uh, the condo oh. complex here um, toward that group yeah. of people. I just, you know, you just, you just hope, hope, hope yeah. that we're not going to get, you know, the news that we're all, uh, you're dreading that he, mm -hmm. you know, the, the mm -hmm. no reports of injuries mm -hmm. right now, no reports of any uh, kind of rescues. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and this is a very is. large complex and they're going to have to go through room by room. Yeah, and it's going to take inch. a while for them to, to get to that point. But I will tell you, this is from moments ago. Um, as we've been monitoring this fire, it does look like they have gained an upper hand on these flames here. It does look like they're making progress, which okay. of course is the hope. Um, yeah. But you... It, it, as Craig Little said, he, he's a firefighter who's been doing this for years. He's seen many of these uh, fires and has been on the front lines. He, in just his own words, called this just devastating yeah. because he knows that so many families are now homeless. They They're are. displaced. Yeah. They do not have a home to go back to, and any of their belongings that were in that home um, are completely destroyed. And at this point, you just hope that no lives were lost. Absolutely. It is It is so sad to see this. Mm -hmm. um, he mentioned that uh, with a large apartment complex like this, the fire spreads so quickly because it's, it's a short burn time uh, from one wall mm -hmm. to the next, from mm -hmm. one condo complex or one condo unit to the next. And so yeah. it just spreads so, so quickly. And especially if it uh, started in an area 
of the roof. And he seemed to say that, the, as you can see here uh, from mm -hmm. moments ago, this video, the parking structure seems to be unaffected. So it, it started in that upper level, yeah, which then collapsed the roof and just swept across. As he said, right around 642 is when they got those first reports. When the first crews showed up, it looked like one unit was fully engulfed in smoke and flames. And from that point, as you mentioned, Jazz, and as Craig Little mentioned that it was able to just sweep through all of these apartment complexes because they're all these walls attached to each other. So it makes it so easy for the flames to continue to spread. Just hope everyone so was able quickly. to get out. I yeah, know. and you hope that that's the case. Everyone, the fire alarms were working. You hope that people were able to right. get um, a, a notice from neighbors if they if their alarm possibly wasn't working. Right. Um, but at this point, this again is a um, video from SkyCal earlier tonight. This is not live, although this, the situation does remain rather the same right yeah. now as fire crews we know are still in defensive mode trying to get an upper hand on this uh, these flames. And it sounds like uh, the firefighters uh, even struggled to make entry right when they arrived. Like that's how uh, strong and uh, already involved this fire was on this condo complex, even in one unit. It. When firefighters showed up, uh, they said there, there was heavy smoke. There was already a lot of fire and they had to jump into that defensive mode uh, pretty quickly. Uh, getting those ladder trucks up, mm -hmm. making this a second alarm, um, moving in and calling on those extra units. So not just the one uh, station responding. Now they have several battalion chiefs there, multiple, multiple ladder trucks, mm -hmm. 150 personnel. Uh, again, this is a video uh, just a few moments ago. Uh, SkyCal had to go refuel, but this is what the, the fire looked like uh, for the better part of an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, just stubborn flames and big flames tearing mm -hmm. through the roof of this condo complex on the, uh, the, uh, the southern peninsula there in the city of Lobita. And what he mentioned was these fire crews uh, possibly had a busy day. You know, they're right next to the Palos Verdes Peninsula, which has the seen a lot of area with um, the landslides anytime there's a rain, especially yep. in one of the communities there where the homes continue to move because the land underneath them is moving. So fire crews, of course, had a very busy day just monitoring the area, responding to any calls they did with that spring storm we had earlier and, and continue to have um, because we are expecting rain tonight. If you're not seeing it in your neighborhood, you probably will through the night. Um, but then they get these calls and a second alarm fire means um, they need more resources. Um, right now we know LA County Fire is there, but if this continues, of course, they may ask um, surrounding agencies to help out as well. Um, but they have battalion chiefs there, as you mentioned, Jasmine. We saw some ambulances on the ground, although, yeah. again, we did not see any active movement with the ambulances. They weren't rushing around to rescue anyone. Right. Um, but, of course, they're on standby not only for possibly um, civilians or people living in that area, but also for firefighters who have now been fighting this blaze for close to two hours. Yeah, and you mentioned, uh, I mean, it, how busy these uh, these fire departments, uh, these firefighters have been uh, dealing mm -hmm. with water rescues, dealing with any kind of uh, other land movement there in the South Bay. Uh, and then on top of that, with this fire, all the resources now focused on this as the rain hopefully has tapered off a little bit, but we know more is on the way. So they were staffed up for that as they do with these rain events here in Southern California. But at this point, you see a large response with all those fire trucks uh, behind the complex. They're lining the street with the lights flashing, and it looks like they have been able to keep those flames from mm -hmm. moving to that uh, the, the other building right adjacent to this. It looks like it might be part of the same complex, but firefighters were on the roof there keeping those flames back. They were, you know, surrounded by the smoke and the flames and Okay, so we have made it. Our, our reporter and our photographer have made it there mm -hmm. on the ground. So that is on the left. That's a live look now at the efforts being made. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can just see the smoke there. But I mean, again, SkyCal showing the extent of, uh, of this fire all across the roof of this building. I see our photographers pulling back. I think it's Lauren Posen is uh, there at the scene, correct? Yeah, trying She's to trying to set up. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
you can see one of those uh, ladders, at least in the firefighter on the ladder, just still dousing um, this building with water, both there on the ground. And you can see this firefighter on a roof. Don't know how close they are to the actual flames, um, but there are crews definitely on the ground with hose. And then you have the ladder crews. I'm going to guess this this person is not as close, given that they're, they are taking off some of their gear here. Oh, and of yeah. course, if they were close enough, all that smoke would be a problem for them. This area, I can imagine even where Lauren's standing, a breather. It, it's hard to breathe because yeah. of all the smoke in the air. Now, I was just checking social media here on some earlier video, and it looked like at some point fire crews were dealing with possibly um, what looked like transformers m maybe had exploded in that area. It did look like some wiring did sit um, yeah. around this building. You said a lot of trees, too, but I have mm -hmm. not seen any of those catch fire. And that, that is good to hear. But you see the top of the roof there. And I was mentioning those chimneys in those uh, condos. Mm -hmm. and, and you see a lot of the chimneys are now burning. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like I'm not, I'm not sure if we got any of information on a transformer exploding. But if we are able to get that confirmed, it looked like at some point that was a very dangerous situation for these firefighters because they Absolutely. were on a ladder very close, sitting high above. If there was any type of explosion, which we see many times in massive fires like this, uh, that would have been a very dangerous situation, of course, for them. Um, again, on the left here, a live picture on the ground. This is as close as our crews can get um, because as, as you can imagine, they are being told to stay back as this is a very active firefight. You're looking at several LA County firefighters here on what looks like a roof that's near this apartment building, um, just trying to gather some of their equipment. You see one with a chainsaw there. Another one looks to be holding some sort of um, ax or pick that the, they probably use to cut holes through the roof. Many times they do that to just try to get some ventilation out of the building. It helps then control this fire um, and control the smoke. Um, so it looks like possibly this crew is in charge of doing that. Um, but of course, this fire still very stubborn. Yeah, I see where you're. Uh, some people are, yeah, reporting mm -hmm. that some transformers might have fueled this fire and were exploding there. Mm -hmm. We know that, you know, usually is the case with these big complexes. You have a lot of the uh, electrical wires surrounding it, and mm -hmm. so that yeah, and and all the uh, the other, uh, uh, you know. Uh, ventilation, air ducts, and then the cars underneath. We were hoping it wouldn't reach any of the vehicles and cause those to explode as well. But uh, this is a, you know, not only a, a condo complex, but it's a very large one with the 25 units. But at least 25 yeah. units, we know that. Um, again, this all started, we know, in just one part of the building. We saw video when our chopper first got over it, when Sky yeah. Cal first got over it. You could still make out much of the building, Jazz. And then we come back to it maybe 30 minutes later, and it looked yeah. like the entire building was fully engulfed. At this so point, quickly. the roof has collapsed of this building, and we know many families probably displaced without a home tonight. We're still working to get information from Red Cross to see if there is an evacuation area that yeah. people can go. Of course, once we get that information, we will bring it to you. In just a few moments here, we are going to have to take a commercial break. Um, but at this point, we will leave you with views of what you're looking at, a yeah. massive condo building on fire in the Lomita area. And we'll be right back.